the happy school. We are a happy school. This is the motto of the Gozo College Rabat Primary, a motto which has become a household name with stakeholders and beyond. The school is the largest primary school on the island of Gozo. It was originally built in 1854 and started to function in 1856. The building as it stands today leaves much to be desired. Space is the biggest problem. The school caters for 384 learners in seven kindergarten classes and 16 primary level classes. I have been leading the school for the past four years, and I'm assisted by two patient, very patient assistant heads, Mr. Silvio and Ms. Helga. Many question, how did this motto originate? When I was young, during my primary school years, all that schooling was about was about books and exams. You, you go to school, you do the classwork, you do the homework, you go back home and you study. I used to do well, mind you, but teachers and adults used to say I was an intelligent boy. I used to come first in class. That was quite good. But schooling was not fun. When I grew up and became a teacher, an assistant head of school, and eventually a head of school, I realized I had the opportunity to change all this. School can be fun. School is fun. Children should come to school because they enjoy being at school. School is a place where they feel happy and so feel excited and eager to attend school. The morning assembly is an important part of the school day. The school day starts here. So it must be exciting, providing the right amount of enthusiasm and energy for the day. The morning assembly is usually very animated with music, dance and mime songs. Every single day we celebrate birthdays and share the fact of the day. Sometimes the kids themselves prepare a dance or other items to perform in front of the other children. Keep fit assemblies are also enjoyed by all. Some fast music, an animator, and that's it. 384 boys and girls jumping, running on the spot, stretching. Mm. During exam week then, keep fit assemblies are done each and every day to help children release tension, which may crop up as a result of the prevalent mentality that exams are something you cannot do without, where exams are considered as an end rather than as a means to achieve a goal or aim. Mentioning exams, I have to be blunt here. I am against summative assessment. The way forward is formative assessment. There are so many ways and means of how to assess pupils. I don't care about exam marks, I care about children. The system at present leaves much to be desired. The change I dream of is a bit far away. But we can start changing the mentality. How? This February, after the half yearly examinations, we gave a letter to each and every pupil, years four, five and six. The idea was brought to my attention by a parent. I discussed it with the school staff, and then we gave the letter to each and every boy and girl. Feedback was overwhelmingly positive. I will just quote parts of it. Don't give up when the going gets tough. Grow up to be kind, caring, generous, loving adults who make a positive difference to this world by how you live your life. Remember, the Javierly result is just a mark for some tests. It cannot measure how amazing you are. The children, they are at the heart of all that goes on at the happy school. The student uh, school council is very active and meets regularly to discuss current issues and propose actions. Children know that they are the core of the school and that their voice counts. Many valid suggestions they put forward are put in practice. Teamwork. Teamwork is another asset at our school. Working together, achieving common goals. Although every staff member is different, yet we all strive to reach common grounds when discussing future plans for the school. This is an asset. Pulling the same rope, operating on the same frequency. Support from colleagues, including that of the Gozo College principal, is vital if we need to move forward. Respect for diverse opinions is essential too. Leading by the book, 
I'm sorry, that's not my style. I practice a give and take attitude. I believe this helps the dynamics of the group. In fact, I believe there's a strong sense of belonging and collegiality between teaching staff. Communication is very important. Disseminating information to stakeholders concerned is a must. The school does its very best to show what's going on. My personal Facebook page is a good platform eh, of what goes on at school. I even post comments when I want to have some feedback eh, from the public and from parents. The school block is a very important communication tool. It's www.ourhappyschool.wordpress.com. The blog gives a perfect idea of what our school is all about. There are information, photos, videos. The school development plan is there too, for all to see. The meetings of the school council meeting are there too. The full report made by external auditors some, a couple of weeks ago is also available for all to read and give feedback. However, something particular I think it's a bit unique is that on our website, on our blog, there's the head's diary. Every day when I go home and before sleeping, before going to sleep, I write down my diary every single school day. I reflect on what happened during the day, my thoughts, feelings and more. So everyone can read what I do at school. However, I do believe that face-to-face -face communication is the best form of communication. The school adopts an open-door policy. Parents can come to talk to the SMT or other members of staff when they wish. We stress that parents should call beforehand to uh, fix an appointment. However, no one is sent home if he or she turns up without notifying beforehand. We do our best to accommodate all in spite of the very busy schedule. The school is fully aware that close collaboration between the school and the wider community is a step in the right direction. Parents are informed regularly of what goes on at school. I have mentioned the blog already. They are encouraged to participate in school activities and they play an important role in the school council. The school council meets once a month to discuss, evaluate, propose. Parental meetings are also held once a month. The school tries to keep good links, close links, between the local community too. From time to time, there are special days organized at school. These trigger a lot of enthusiasm from the parents and teachers alike. The list is long, but I will give you a short, brief, clear idea by encouraging you to watch this video clip. by Alicia Joe. And guess what? Alicia Joe is here with us today live. Welcome to the show, Alicia. Would you like to convey a message to our listeners? Thank you. The message is in the song. Generation X, please wash us some respect. Say the plan is.
staying all day in the office is a nightmare. I hate my, my office. My mission is to go about the school, visiting classrooms, being with the children and kids, teachers and children, getting to know them more, taking an active role in all that goes on at school. Just to cite a few examples, if children are encouraged to come to school in costume or Halloween day, I do the same. That's me. <laughs> Speaking about the pyjama day, I attend school in my pyjamas too. Mm? Uh, during the Happy School Olympic experience, I took part in a race, specifically for adults. I finished second, but with a strained leg muscle. <laughs> I, that's me too. And as the assistant head, he came first. Oh. I have been mentioning children all throughout. Knowing the names of all is no easy task, but it does make a difference. Showing children that they are not just a number. I know your name. I know who you are. You are important to the whole school community. You make a difference in all that goes on at school. This is then reciprocated when children come to the office and they just open up. They are not afraid to speak, to share their story. At home, I have so many cards and gifts given to me by the kids, which I really treasure. And when I feel down, I just browse through and my mood changes swiftly. There's so much to say, but time is running short. So, to conclude, I believe in child-centered schools where the children are protagonists, not spectators. I believe in a school where the voice of the children is given top priority, eventually leading the children be agents of change themselves, being the catalysts in a system which really caters for the needs of all, where the one-size-fits-all mentality is finally abolished, where exams are no longer the rule of the day, where formative assessment is practiced, assessment for learning, not assessment of learning. I believe in a non-uniform policy, when children can come to school feeling more comfortable in everyday clothes and not in their uniform. I believe in a school where teachers, parents and children and other stakeholders work collaboratively to enhance teaching and learning, making it an enjoyable experience. I believe in a school where the school community is one big family, working towards achieving common goals established by all stakeholders in the forefront children. I believe in a school which leaves a permanent mark on children's lives. And when they look back at the years spent in primary years, they will be able to say, oh yes, those were the best days of my life. I believe that ongoing professional development is a must. I attend courses to help me develop my leadership skills, even abroad. There is always room for improvement. These are opportunities where good practices are shared and where one can engage in collaborative dialogue, which may lead to other opportunities. The moment I say, I know it all, I'm the best headmaster in Malta and Gozo, then that's the, that, that is the right moment to quit. Believe me, I strongly believe in a happy school. Thank you. <laughs>